Once again, hello everyone, welcome to uh, Inland Software's webinar titled Enterprise Architect UL Modeling with Codebeam Realign. Uh, my name is Christoph Horvath and I will be your host today along with my colleague Mylan Tran, who is a member of our pre-sales team. And today Mylan will be responsible for showing us how to integrate UML into application lifecycle management. In other words, the integration between Enterprise Architect and Codebeamer. First off, just a few words about today's agenda. As always, we're going to start with the basics, some fundamental definitions, and then we're going to move on to discussing how UML is used in software development. After that, we will dive deeper into the details of connecting UML and application lifecycle management and the benefits this could bring you. Finally, we're going to show you how Codebeamer's um, Enterprise Architect integration works during a live demonstration of the product. Now, after the uh, presentation on the live demo, you will get a chance to ask all your questions during the uh, questions and answers session. And please note the, uh, the questions box on the GoToWebinar control panel on the right side of your screen. You can use this box to submit questions anytime during the webinar, which we will answer at the end during the Q&A session. Uh, please also note that the video recording of today's webinar will be published on the Intland website soon after today's session. And once you're there, when visiting our webinars and events page, please make sure you take a look at our upcoming events and you know feel free to sign up for any of our future webinars or workshops that you like. So moving on, just a few words about Inland Software, real simple, real fast. The company was founded in 1998 and is based in Stuttgart, Germany, but we also have an office in the Silicon Valley in the US and partners in Korea and Taiwan. As most of you know, we are the uh, developers and the only vendors of Codebeamer ALM, which is a fully integrated and complete application lifecycle management solution. Um, Inland is also providing consulting and services based out of Germany with the mission to help our clients manage the complexity of their um, elaborate product and application development processes. Speaking of which, here's a short list of our some of our clients. As you can see, we are serving customers from um, practically all kinds of industry, such as the automotive, um, defense, high technology, medical and finance sectors. And we have clients ranging from mid-sized companies to large global enterprises, such as uh, Samsung or Lufthansa, Siemens, all those. Right, so let's move on to today's main topic, UML. To start with the basics, uh, the Unified Modeling Language is an industry standard tool used in software engineering. It's an object-oriented modeling language that is used for modeling all kinds of system architectures. And as a set of, of notations and, and rules, it helps visualize the structure of complex systems of all sorts. Um, that said, it's really important to distinguish between the UML model and the set of UML diagrams that depict the system. So basically, a diagram is no more than a partial representation of a certain component, while the model itself is a complete visualization of the, the entire system. So basically, uh, diagrams are just part of the model. Now, depending on what kind of diagrams you choose to use, uh, your model could be either static or dynamic. Uh, for instance, you have your class diagrams, which are static, or uh, you, know, you have these sequence and, and activity diagrams, which are dynamic. So in the first case, um, static diagrams represent the structure of the whole system using objects and relationships between these objects and the operations and processes and the attributes that define these, how these uh, projects relate and work together. The second type, dynamic. Um, in this case, the model represents how the system actually behaves, how the components work together, and overall how the, the entire system operates. So obviously, this is an activity or process-based representation. So you know, overall, UML can be used to represent both the architecture of any complex system you're developing and the processes that it uses when, when operating. Okay, so now that we understand the basics of UML, let's see how UML and application lifecycle management can efficiently work together to support your software development processes. Now, software development, as most of you know, ideally begins with identifying the goals, which is usually in, in an agile environment uh, done by user stories. Now, these user stories simply capture what the client is looking for. Um, they summarize the end user's expected experience when using the software system that you're developing. So basically, user stories represent what, uh, what the users 
want to be able to do with the piece of software. So let's say, for example, that um, you know, as an as an administrator, the user wants to be able to change the rules of receiving notification emails. Uh, now, once you know what you want to develop, you will have to determine how to get there, how to develop it. And this is why these user stories are then usually translated into requirements. Now, these requirements describe uh, the expected functionality in more technical terms. Um, that is, you know, what functionality is needed to achieve the experience that is described by the user stories. So ideally, these requirements are easily understandable for software developers as they outline all the modules and you know, components, features, etc. that will be needed. Specific tasks can then be derived from the requirements. So, you know, sticking to our example of, uh, of notification emails, you will then need a graphical interface, a user interface that lets the user tick the right boxes about what they want to receive notifications about. Then you will also need the backend system of all this. So you will need the functionality that saves these rules and links them to each user. And you will need a system that tracks these triggering events and actually sends out the notifications. So you can see that even um, in this really simple feature, there's multiple components that you need to develop. Now, if you consider all that we have just discussed, it is really easy to understand the way UML and ALM can come together. Uh, the above mentioned types of uh, UML diagrams, the, as you can recall, we talked about the architectural and the behavior components. They complement the user stories and the requirements perfectly. So altogether, they help understand how the whole system should operate. Let me just explain a little bit. First, you have your user stories, which help you outline the processor, processes or the, you know, the behavior of the software. Then you will draw up a blueprint of the system architecture that allows you to realize these processes. And it helps you identify what needs to be done, what components you will need to develop, and how these will work together with each other. Now, you will then describe these as requirements, which will be split into tasks. And you can assign these tasks to your team members. And there you go, your piece of software is on its way to being developed. That is, however, just a part of the story. Because not only do um, UML, user stories, and requirements complement each other, but they also help you stay in control of the entire development process. So if you manage to connect your um, UML, your unified model and language diagrams or you know, models and your application lifecycle management platform, what you get is practically an executable blueprint of your system. Now, this blueprint, if it's uh, integrated with your ALM, it will guide your development process by letting you see the big picture at all times uh, during, during development. You can always go back to this blueprint and check how you're progressing. Now, your application lifecycle management solution allows you to capture your requirements, then lets you break those down into tasks and assign each of these tasks to your development team or members of your team. And then you can manage and monitor the entire process of development all the way through the testing and release. Meanwhile, using an ALM solution also lets you establish links between all these work items, giving you complete traceability and total control over all processes, as you'll see later in the demonstration. So this is how UML and ALM could operate together. And uh, while well, this leads us uh, to the next topic, so now that the benefits of using UML and ALM together are obvious, uh, but the thing is, these are two really different disciplines. Uh, various different platforms and tools are used for them. Not many tools out there in the market offer both advanced UML diagram functionality and full-blown ALM features. You could use separate tools, but the problem with that is that it can be a hassle uh, because you need to integrate these. And this is exactly why we have created our Enterprise Architect integration with CodeBeamer. This integration lets you use an advanced UML solution, Enterpri Enterprise Architect, to set up uh, UML system diagrams. And it, you can then simply synchronize this data with CodeBeamer, your integrated end-to-end -end ALM solution. And the way this works is really convenient, real simple, because you will just click synchronize and import your data to CodeBeamer, and that's it. And then you can use our advanced tracker system and workflow engine to uh, drive your processes and to establish links between all your work items, uh, let them be requirements, tasks, task cases, releases, whatever. Uh, so this lets you trace um, your requirements all the way through to testing and release. 
Now, this ensures complete traceability, as mentioned before, throughout the entire development lifecycle. But this will be really simple to, um, to see in our live demonstration. So I will guide you through um, the live demonstration in Copiumer. Um, as you can see here, as of now, we are in Copiumer. And we are in our medical template device um, template, which contains different components. So therefore, if I jump into trackers, you can see that our medical device template contains our um, contains of different components such as the customer requirements, system requirements, um, software requirements, tasks, and also test cases. So from here, I will directly jump into our enterprise architect. So this is the enterprise architect. So basically, enterprise architect is based on Visual Studio and was written in C Sharp. And the unified modeling language diagram helps you to see the whole architecture of your system that you are developing and also the processes which it used to operate. UML is a key feature of ALM, which can be tightly integrated into your development environment. So first, um, you have to, to define or identify your goals, which are basically defined within user stories. So for instance, you have customer requirements as, for example, um, as customer, I would like to have a um, touchscreen user interface for the medical uh, device. And from here, you can define system requirements for your customer requirements, like um, interfaces between the system and others has to be implemented as well. Also, from, from the system requirement, you can define like uh, software requirements, for example, interfaces between the software systems to other systems. And from all these components or requirements, you can um, generate test cases and test the components you are implementing. Also, if you want to, um, from the software requirements, you can break down your requirements to specific tasks and also outline what the developers have to do next. So basically, in, um, you can model these, all these components accordingly using all the capabilities of Enterprise Architect. And also for each component and requirements, you can use several diagram types which Enterprise Architect offers, like for example, sequence or activity diagrams to model dynamic diagrams or um, class diagrams for, for example, static diagrams as well. Um, for this webinar, um, we prepared a class diagram. And from here, you can see the structure of the system and also the relationship between um, these, these uh, components or requirements. So let me show you how it looks like in Co-Beamer. So for example, I have this, this class diagram. And once I go to Co-Beamer to the tracker, you can see that we have a tracker also for uh, customer requirements. And um, the enterprise architect integration is really simple. So once I go back to enterprise architect, just with one click, you can easily integrate your components um, diagram into Copeamer. So for example, therefore we implemented a um, Copymer plugin for Enterprise Architect called EA Connector for Copymer, as you can see here. Um, so you can use this plugin to, for example, directly synchronize with, um, with Copymer issues directly from Enterprise Architect. So therefore, you will first need to add a Copymer URL for this, is this URL. Um, also, you need to add a, a username and also verify your, with a password. And afterwards, you can test the connection. And as the connection was successful, you can um, also, you need also to specify a target project. So for example, this is the medical template. And also, you have to specify the, the tracker in um, the connector properties. So for now, I, I am choosing the customer requirements from my medical template. So this is this, this uh, work item here. Um, also, afterwards, once selecting the target project and also the target tracker, you can save. And then you can easily import your target tracker from Copeamer to Enterprise Architect. 
but um, so for example, as customer, I would like to have touchscreen user interface or other user stories uh, from CodeBeamer. Um, so for this webinar, I already exploited the work item called medical device components. Um, and also once I synchronize with CodeBeamer, so therefore I will just click here, click go to extension and then go to synchronize. Afterwards, Enterprise Architect shows a new tab. And on the left hand side, you can see um, the connected items. Like you can see the tracker or the workflow, medical, uh, work item, medical device components in the uh, structure tree, tree here. And um, once I synchronize the Enterprise Architect with CodeBeamer view, I will get a browser view. So you can see the browser view down here directly in Enterprise Architect. Um, so here you can also see the created issue um, in CodeBeamer. And also you can directly uh, modify and change um, in this view. So for example, if I go to edit, I can uh, change um, the, the value, for example, as well. Um, and this will be synchronized with CodeBeamer. And also, when I go to uh, the model, I can, for example, change um, my model. Let's make some changes. And I will show you how it looks like here. Um, let me go back to Enterprise Architect. And then here I will directly import, export these changes. And once I refresh the page, you can see that the changes have been directly synchronized with the work item in Copima. So this is how um, Enterprise Architect can support you with a development process by keeping trace and you can also modeling all the architecture for your development process. And you can also keep trace and see, for example, which requirements and components are connected to each other as between all the work items um, are all connected and linked to each other in CodeBeamer. You can always have complete traceability for a development process. So for example, as I'm in the customer requirements uh, work item, I can directly derive um, a system requirement. So basically, uh, we are working on just one component now. So let's take, for example, the um, this user story. As customer, I would like to have a user, a touch screen user interface. And from here, I can directly derive a system requirement. And let's call it provide native resolution, for example. And from here, I can also directly assign this system requirement to a release. So let's choose one. For example, let's choose release 1.0. And I can also assign it, for example, to myself. And from here, I can also directly um, add an association. So for example, I want to have the system requirements connected to my customer requirement. And therefore, I will select this. Let's save this up. So description is needed. So let's save this up. So for now, um, once I go into this item, this customer requirement, I can see the relation. So for example, I can see that this, this is a system requirement which is related to my customer requirement. And from here, from a system requirement, I can also derive for example, a specific software requirement. So let's go to new referring item and add software requirement from here. So for example, um, define operating systems. And also I'm able to directly um, assign to a release. So as I'm adding a new referring item, um, the CodeBeamer automatically um, knows that this is for um, assigned to release 1.0 as we have the relationship for the um, system requirement already. And also um, this item is already assigned to me. So for now I will need a description and also I will need to add a new uh, association. 
and now we'll save it up. And as you can see here, we have a, a relationship to my system requirement from my software requirements. And also, I will add a new task, for example, and let's call it implement universal windows functionality and a description and also I can assign it to a release and assign it to myself or a team and from here choose the system requirement so another great thing about CodeBeamer is that we can show full traceability. So for example, if I go back to trackers, we provide the traceability, so-called traceability browser. So when I click on it, you can show multiple levels of dependencies for your work items, such as customer requirements, for example. And then CodeBeamer comes with suggested trackers to show the next dependency for your work items. So like um, let's show the dependency from customer requirements to system requirements, for example, and then deep dive down, for example, to software requirements. And from here, you can also go down to tasks. And now we'll zoom out a little bit. So as you can see, this is a dependency or a trace I just created. Like, um, I would like to have a touchscreen user interface. This is what my customer requirements, and I defined a user system requirement and you can see the, the type of relationship here and also you can see that we have the software requirements defining the operating systems and also a task referring to this software requirements. So this is, gives you a really nice overview how all the work items are connected together. And also you can export the traceability browser to Office at any point of time. So let's export this. And also, once I open the traceability browser in my Excel, you can see how this looks like in Excel. So for example, also the relationship from, from one work item to another one is uh, visualized here. And also you can see the status for each work item here, and also as well as the type of relationship. So at any point of time, for example, you can also run and manage your entire development process through, for example, testing, and you can also plan your product within uh, our release management accordingly. So for example, if I go back to software requirements, I would like to have test cases for it. So you can directly jump here, and I will choose the newly created software requirement and generate a test case for it. So we call it test case for operating systems. And from here, you can also <clears throat> add um, or assign it to a team or a group of person. And also, you can uh, add a test step. So for example, this should be step one. And the ex expected result is um, test. So this is how you can generate test case from uh, software requirements. And also, in CodeBeamer, we have test sets where you can uh, store or uh, test multiple test cases. So let's create a new test set. And you can set a possible release for this test set. So let's choose the uh, release 1.0. And also, as you can see here on the right-hand side, we have access to the test plans. This means we have access now to all the test cases which are stored in this medical IEC project. So like, um, I, will, I want to test um, this one. And also, when I go down here, you can see that I also have access to test cases which are stored in, in other projects. So for example, I have an electric city car, and now I want to test, let's say, I want to reuse this test case. Let's save this up. So for now, you can see that I just created a test set with two test cases. As of now, I need to go into t each test case and accept this. 
series. So I just accepted one test case. And also, I will accept this. And now we'll generate a new test run and call it test run one and choose a test configuration. Like for example, or I can choose also many test configurations. And also I can choose a release to run the test uh, run. So let's run this test. So as you can see here, we have a, a test case called manual test. And I will just let it pass. And also, um, this is a second test case, which has uh, one test step. So for example, the action should be step one. The expected result is passed. And I will also let it pass. The actual result is passed. And I will just pass the step. Right. So basically, as you can see here, the progress is 100%. So the, the test is, um, has passed. And for now, I will also directly jump into um, our coverage browser. So basically, the, our coverage browser is just a tool to analyze the results of the latest test runs and also of the um, resulted test coverage of the requirements. And in the left-hand side, you can see the tree of requirements and also the test cases, which verifies them. And um, you have the coverage computed from the most recent test runs. And also, as you can see here, we have the coverage with different uh, statuses. Or like, um, for example, not covered means that if the requirements or a group uh, of requirements has no test cases at all, also, in incomplete means that if one or more of test cases verifying the requirements or a group of a requirement has not run yet. Also, we have a, a status called a block. Um, that means that if one or more of the test cases verifying the requirements or a group of requirements is blocked. Also, another one is failed. Uh, failed means that one or more of the test cases verifying the requirement or a group of requirement has failed. And also down here, we have also past status. Past means that if uh, all test cases verifying requirement or a group of requirements, they are already passed. And as I mentioned before, you can also see um, the number of tests, test cases which verifies this requirements here. So for example, I can see in total, I have 16 requirement, uh, test cases. And for this particular um, requirement, I have one test case which verifies this requirement. And also you can see a color bar which shows the most recent result of all test cases and also which verifies this particular um, requirement. Also, another great um, thing about our coverage browser is that we have multiple ways to, for example, filter um, the data which is displayed in the coverage browser. Um, you can easily change um, from which tracker the requirement issues are listed. You can just, for example, select another tracker in the topmost selector. So for example, as of now, we are filtering on software requirements. And I can directly jump into the coverage browser um, for my system requirements here. And also, um, to narrow down the sets of requirements, you can also enter a term in the text box. So for example, you can type in a text to filter. For example, let's yeah, filter for system. And as you can see here, I get a filtered list here. And also, um, you can now filter also on, um, on requirements, which are already covered or uncovered, just here in the coverage. So I can filter on uh, the coverage status. Also, I can filter on the configuration where the um, test run has been executed. And also, I can filter on the releases as well, and also on the status. And the permanent link, for example, um, within the permanent link, you can save the filter configuration. And you can now also share the URL with your colleagues. So another great thing what um, Copumer has is 
within our release mechanism. So basically, release management is all about uh, just maintaining and also tracking different versions of your project deliverables along with the planned and actual release schedule and the issues to be resolved in each different version. And um, this is not only applicable to software de development, but also to any type of project where some milestones need to be reached. And you can simply assign work items or components for a product to release um, to a release or a milestone. So for example, as you can see here, we assigned um, system requirement and also software requirement and task to the specific release 1.0. And also you can do a baseline at any point of time. So basically baseline in CodeBeamer is um, to capture, this. basically this is just a snapshot. And the snapshot captures all the state of your digital content in a moment. So pretty much it's behaving like, like a mark at a particular state of, um, of a version. So this is basically a version control system for your um, project. So therefore, as you can see here, I just created a baseline yesterday and I will create a new one and let's call it baseline two. And now from here I can select the baseline to compare so let's choose baseline one, and I want to compare it with the newly created baseline two. So therefore, I will choose baseline two and click on the compare selected baselines. As of now, you can see in the statistics which items or um, which work items, documents, and projects has been changed all over. So for example, I can see um, work items. I can also see that there are there has been modification on my test cases, and once I go here, I can show the diff as well. So let's go back to Enterprise Architect. So basically, um, we implemented just one component. So basically, it was the touchscreen user interface out of eight other components, as you can see here. So um, from here, you can directly continue to implement all the other uh, seven components. And basically, this is the way how we managed to connect our unified modeling language diagrams or models with our application lifecycle management platform. So basically, this was the live demonstration. But before we go down or go further with the Q&A session, let me just ask you another question. So like, would you like to receive more information about CodeBeamer? All right, thank you very much. So pretty much this was uh, our webinar. Yeah, let's move on to your questions. The... Right, well, first of all, Sanjin says hi. <laughs> that was in the beginning. And now let's move on to the uh, further questions. Mylan, please uh, just keep the screen sharing and then you can go on and answer all these questions. But that's, that's right with you. All right. So basically, I want to thank you for your attention. Um, I would like to also invite you to our next webinar titled Demand and Project Portfolio Demand Management on 3rd of June 2015 at 4 o'clock. So let's jump to the questions. So there's a question, Enterprise Architect, CodeBeamer Integration Program Supported Enterprise Architect's um, Database Connection. Enterprise Architect can use modeling and database and edit log for several users. 
I don't think I, I, I get your question. Can you specify your question, please? Or otherwise, I will follow up with you, and then we will clarify this question afterwards. Another question is um, from Thorsten Fuchs. Is it possible to map any requirements to system or software components in enterprise architect? So basically, this is possible. You can do that. So as of now, um, there's another question from Peter Lieber. Um, is it possible to see the traceability metrics also within enterprise architect? So as of now, I, um, there's a feature, um, the traceability metrics in enterprise architect, which you also can, can use. But I don't know if this answers the question. So to clarify, uh, could be merged traceability matrix is in code Beamer, but enterprise architect has its own traceability matrix. Yeah. There's another question from Peter Lieber again. Um, how is the relationship between enterprise architect and Copima realized? Is there a staging or version including gap analysis and visual change management? So basically, we have this plugin where you can synchronize uh, Copima issues to enterprise architect. And if we want to do further gap analysis, we also provide REST API. There's another question. Do you present more of the webinar topic, or is it over now? So unfortunately, this is over now, but you can have access to a recording uh, right after the, um, after the recording is being uploaded on our website. There's another question from Sven Kraus. How can the, the items be synced to Enterprise Architect? So basically, I've shown, as I've shown you before, we have implemented the so-called EA connector from Copima. And from here, you can directly um, choose a project and also a, a, track, a tracker. And after that, you can um, directly import the tracker to Enterprise Architect once you verified your account with your password. There's another question from, from Sun Jin Kim. Um, there's a question whether it's possible integration feature is only working local EAP files. Um, so as I get your question right, this is also possible for your um, for a browser-based system. So as of now for a webinar, I use my local machine, but it also works for copymail.com or sas.com on or, or also on your local environment. This is, um, yeah, you can do that on your, on your um, browser environment also. So there's another question from Sven Kraus. Is it possible with all types of elements? Um, unfortunately, I think the uh, first part of the question is missing, so I don't think I get that question. I think I will follow up with you and drop you an email. So, so basically, I'm not sure if this answers your question, but uh, when importing to CodeBeamer, you will just import the whole diagram. So whatever types of elements are in there, the diagram will still be imported to CodeBeamer. I'm not sure if this was your question, but hopefully this answers. Uh, okay. If it doesn't, please just feel free to shoot us a message and my let me follow up with you. Right. Right. Any further questions? I'll just wait um, about 30 seconds. What do you think, Mylan? There should be right. any more questions. So if you have any questions, just drop them in the Q&A section in the community. Right, well, it seems like there's, uh, there are no further questions. So let us thank you for your attention once again. And uh, well, we're looking forward to seeing you on next week's webinar. All right, thank you, goodbye. Thank you very much.